In this lesson, I want to explain to you why using temporary environments is such a powerful practice and why you should consider using them if you're working with serverless architectures. You see, a very common practice in testing is to see the data your test needs before you execute a test case, and then when the test is done, you delete all the data that had been created by the test, including both the data that you seeded initially and any additional data that the test itself has created. So when you're writing your test, it might look something like this, where you have a before all step to see the data for the test, and then you have the actual test case itself, followed by an after all step where you do the cleanup. It's a very common sight in JavaScript test modules, and it's something that I and many of my colleagues have done for many years. But the annoying thing is that despite our best efforts, some things always get left behind by the test for different reasons. Maybe you forgot to delete the data, maybe you got lazy or was under a lot of time pressure, so you skipped the delete step, or maybe you hit Control C in the middle of a test run because you know that something's wrong and that the rest of your test is gonna fail anyway, and so the after all step for a lot of your tests just never got executed. Or maybe, and this is a common one, that your delete step only deletes the data that you seeded yourself, but you weren't tracking the data that are created by the test. So over time, this test data starts to accumulate in your environment until you're forced to roll out a policy to wipe the whole environment every so often to get rid of all these test data that are now getting in people's way. So what if instead of using those shared environments like dev, test, and staging, where we share data and resources with other teammates or potentially other teams, we will create temporary environments that are short-lived and transient. With the service framework, it can be as easy as providing a stage overwrite when you run the serverless deploy command. This will create a new cloud formation stack along with any resources that you have defined in your service or YAML, including Lambda functions, API gateway, DynamoDB tables, etc., etc. And you can do the same with other deployment frameworks as well. With SAM, you can create a new environment by overriding the stack name like this. And the great thing about using temporary environments for feature work is that you can work in this isolated environment where you don't have to worry about destabilizing shared environments like dev with your half-finished changes or having to step on other people's toes and overwrite their changes in those environments because you need to quickly test something in AWS. So pretty much right after you created your feature branch, you create a temporary environment for this feature. And then you go to work on the feature, writing Lambda functions and the tests and then running the test against the temporary environment. And when you're done with the feature and merge the back in, you can safely delete the temporary environment as well. And you'll be like this environment never existed. But just as you should avoid long-lived feature branches, you should also avoid long-lived, not so temporary, temporary environments as well. In fact, if you know you're blocked on a feature and can't make any progress, it's almost better to delete the temporary environment and then recreate it when you're able to work on a feature again. Another good use case for temporary environments is in the CI-CD pipeline. So when we're working on a feature, we can run local tests against the temporary environment as you saw in my demo earlier in the chapter. We can also do the same thing and use temporary environments to run integration and end-to-end -end tests in a CI-CD pipeline so that you don't end up polluting those shared environments with test data. In this case, you can even use things like the GitHub SHA to name your temporary environment. And as part of your CI-CD pipeline, you'll create a temporary environment. And then you run your integration and end-to-end -end tests against this uh, environment. And when you're done, delete the temporary environment. But that's still not enough, right? Your code still hasn't been deployed to the target environment. So you do that. Assuming all the tests have passed, of course, then you deploy your changes to the actual target environment, which is one of your main environments like dev, 
test, staging, or production. So doing this, you don't have to worry about polluting your shared environment with test data that are generated by running tests in the CI-CD pipelines. And when you're working with serverless technologies like Lambda or API Gateway or DynamoDB, all these services charge you based on usage, so there's no additional cost for running these temporary environments either. But the common question I hear is, how do I make sure that the resource names don't clash with existing resources? Most of the time, it boils down to not explicitly naming any CloudFormation resources. Luckily for us, usually CloudFormation doesn't require you to name a resource. Things like DynamoDB tables, SNS topics, and so on. CloudFormation would generate a random name using the name of the CloudFormation stack and the logical ID of the resource, followed by some random characters. But sometimes you do have to name a resource yourself, such as with an event bridge bus, where you're required to provide a name for the bus. In these unfortunate cases, just make sure that you name the resource in a consistent format, which includes the name of the environment somewhere as a prefix or a suffix. And doing these two things are usually enough to avoid name clashes. But taking a step back, just what exactly is an environment anyway? You've probably inferred from what I've said so far that an environment doesn't necessarily equate to an account. If you're following AWS best practices and using multiple accounts, then you probably have accounts for dev, test, staging, and production. And within this account, you have the corresponding environment, or at least the main environment, where dev is shared within the team, and test is where you integrate with other teams. Staging should resemble production and is where you run load tests or test production release candidates, etc. And typically, developers will be working in the dev account, so all of your temporary environments will be created there. And each environment might be represented by a different CloudFormation stack. If everything that encompasses your application is captured in that one stack, or maybe each environment is represented by a CDK application, which might contain one or more stacks. Or maybe some combination of cloud formation stacks and other things that are outside of them, such as infrastructure pieces that are created as part of the landing zone for each account. To illustrate what I mean by that, imagine your app is a REST API with API Gateway and Lambda functions and DynamoDB tables, all of which are defined in and deployed as a single cloud formation stack. But then your API needs to interface with external dependencies, which could be third-party services like Twilio, PayPal, or MailChimp. Or it might be other services in your organization, maybe owned by your team or other teams. And so to interface with these external dependencies, you're going to need additional information, like API keys for third-party services or the URL for other internal services. And often, these are saved in SSM Prime Store or Secrets Manager. And all the parameters have been organized into apps, environments, and parameters, which is how you should do it in SSM Prime Store. And then in your code, you're loading those parameters somehow. In JavaScript, you can use the MIDI middleware engine, which has a handy SSM middleware. So you're able to pass the name of the environment into the function as an environment variable, and then use that to load the parameter for the right environment. But then if you're going to be using temporary environment, does that mean that you have to duplicate all of your SSM parameters every time you create a new temporary environment? That would be a lot of work for sure, and a big maintenance headache, especially if you're following security best practices and rotate things like API keys and database credentials. Thankfully, a really easy way to get around this problem is to add another environment variable. Let's call it SSM stage to direct your function to use a different environment when it comes to deciding which SSM parameters to load. And if we look at the definition of these two environment variables using the server framework as example here, because it's got some handy shortcuts to make this really easy. Stage is basically the main stage name which you've seen how you can override with the serverless deploy command. For the SSM stage, 
The opt prefix here means that let's look for a parameter called SSM stage from the command line argument. So if I was creating a temporary environment called feature branch, and I want my functions to use the SSM parameters for the dev environment, then this is the serverless deploy command I will run, where I override the stage name and set it to feature branch. And then I'll provide the SSM stage argument via the command line so that this opt SSM stage variable would evaluate to dev. And lastly, this comma here provides a fallback mechanism. So if SSM stage is not provided as a command line argument, then the SSM underscore stage environment variable would fall back to the stage name. So if I was to run serverless deploy to the test environment without providing a SSM stage argument, then both the stage and SSM underscore stage environment variables would have the value of test. And that's what you would do when you're working with one of the main environments. Just omit the SSM stage command line argument and that's it. I hope this made sense and that this process should be fairly straightforward to follow. And I hope you've understood the value of using temporary environments. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.